Welcome back to the Finance Value Guy. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually use GPT-40 to analyze a stock and judge whether or not it is valued or overvalued. So this is actually a really simple way, and this even works for beginners. I've done many different ways of prompting, and this is by far the easiest way that I've found that you can actually do this. So the first things you're going to want to do is of course, head on over to Yahoo Finance. The reason we're going to use Yahoo Finance is because this allows you to essentially get financial data for a company and it just provides it at a glance. So for example, what we could do is we could get Microsoft. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two different screenshots to make this prompt actually work. So the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need the statistics. So this just gives ChatGPT all of the data, such as the current market cap, the future market cap. And what I really like about Yahoo Finance is that it always already has the peg ratio and it already has the enterprise value to the EBITDA which means that this already has done a lot of the heavy lifting for you in terms of the market's future implications. That's why with this page right here, what we're going to go ahead and do, just scroll down, make sure everything's there, then just right click on the page, then click print. Then what you want to make sure you do as well is make sure that you actually click save as PDF, because if you click print to PDF, it's not going to work and it's going to be a lot of hassle. So just click save as PDF. Then what you want to do is you want to scroll down to the financials of the company. And this is where you get a lot more data. So then what you want to do is you want to come to the financial section. Then of course, you can see right here that this just gives you all of these numbers. Now with these numbers, all you want to do is you just want to once again, right hand, click print and then just save that. So now this is where we want to input this prompt. So I put, I have the historical financial statements from Microsoft in PDF format. The company's current market cap is $3.5 trillion. And based on this information, can you analyze the key financial metrics and trends and estimate the company's future growth potential and calculate a fair value for the stock using common valuation and provide a recommendation on whether or not the stock appears undervalued or overvalued. Then just make sure you've attached those two PDFs and then we're going to click enter. Once these are uploaded, then you can see that now we have this information. So what GPT-40 is going to do, it's going to essentially take the financials, take the summary, and then based on all of that data, it's going to firstly, of course, analyze whether or not the stock is doing well and estimate its growth potential. After that, it's going to use these numbers and calculate a fair value for the stock using common valuation methods. One of the valuation methods that it likes to use is the DCF. Although you can use different detailed ones, what it will do is it might just apply traditional ones such as seven to nine percent and a terminal growth rate of two to three percent. Now you can see right here exactly how the stock analysis has become and it gives us a lot of decent information. So you can see there are three key sections that we want to look at when analyzing the stock. You can see a lot of the times these numbers and stuff, it's just going to confuse people. So don't even pay attention to the numbers. But of course, like if you're trying to analyze, I would say what you want to do is you want to just basically sift through the data as quickly as possible. So you can read the future growth potential. It says Microsoft has demonstrated robust financial performance with strong profitability and cash generation. The company's high ROE and ROA reflect efficient management and strong business fundamentals. And then here actually talks about the peg ratio and says that this ratio suggests that while the stock is priced at a premium, the earnings growth prospects considering a five-year period are reasonable. And it does see here, Revenue growth remains strong with quarterly revenue growth at a 10.85 year over year, indicating sustained demands for its products and services, particularly in cloud computing and software. Then you can see if we scroll down here, it says to estimate the fair value of Microsoft, we can use the DCF method and a comparable company analysis. You can see right here, this is rather good because it doesn't just only use the DCF, it also uses the comparable company analysis, which means that we have two methods which allow us to gain a kind of average on where the valuation sits. You can see it uses the discount rate of 7 to 9%, a terminal growth rate of 2.3%, and then the DCF fair value estimate gives us a fair value of $350 to $380 per share, depending on what the exact growth rate assumptions were used. Now you can see here, it says a comparable company analysis using valuation multiples such as PE, slash PS and EV slash EBITDA from comparable tech giants, for example, Amazon, Alphabet and Apple. Current multiples are currently slightly above average, indicating that the market has high growth expectations already priced in. And then of course, finally down here, we do get our recommendation, undervalued or overvalued. It has given the current market cap of 3.5 trillion in the valuation metrics. It suggests that Microsoft might actually be overvalued or trading above its fair value range. And given its current price of around $410, 
that the premium valuation multiples indicate high investor expectations, potentially reflecting an overvaluation in the short term. And you can see right here, it says investors should be cautious of the current price levels and may consider waiting for a more attractive entry point if valuation concerns are paramount. And nicely and precisely, it gives us a rather nice prediction. It says, hold cautiously, buy on dips with a long-term value as Microsoft's continued innovation and market position supports sustained growth. However, monitor valuation metrics closely to avoid overpaying relative to the intrinsic value. So what's interesting about this is that we can see that potentially where Microsoft actually might fall to. Now, currently what you're looking at is the technical chart for Microsoft, basically just the graph chart. So what you can see right here is that we have this horizontal ray and I'm just going to put this at Microsoft's basic support. So I'm actually going to go on the daily and you can see, see right and you can see right here that on the daily, there is actually a decent area of support. So I'm going to go ahead now and get a box and I'm going to use this rectangle to show you guys where this level of support is. So you can see that there is actually a level of support around this level at around 380, which shows us that if Microsoft actually drops to 380 again, that is going to be a really key area of support for us to actually buy in at the stock. So most people might look at Microsoft stock here and might be buying here, they might be selling here, but we know that with the intrinsic value for Microsoft, what we can actually do is we can plot now two ranges. So what we can do is of course plot the support, like I said before, we can of course plot the lower support, but I wanna show you guys something that's really crazy about this. If we don't just wanna plot the supports, we can also use this box right here, and this is gonna give us the actual range for where we actually want to buy the stock. So for example, this is support based on no fundamental analysis with GPT-40. And you can see that if we put the price label there and the price label there, this is actually rather relative to where GPT-40 suggests the buy range is. If you remember, it says that the true fair value is around $350 to $380. And then when we actually look at the technicals of the stock, we can actually see that it actually is hovering around $380 and $360 for the support levels. So we do know that if Microsoft comes into this level, this is definitely going to be a buy. Now, what we can do is we can put the intrinsic value suggested buy GPT-40 using the DCF model to see where we want to buy. So let's remove the supports and resistance, or in fact, let's keep those on, but then let's go down to 330 and then let's go up to 380. And we can see that there's actually an overlap between these zones. So we can see that if we look down to 330 and we actually look up here to 380, we can see that this area right here, just above the support, is ideally where we want to buy. Like this is what I would call the Goldilocks zone for investing in Microsoft. That would actually give you an intrinsically fair reward. Or if you want to do pay a little bit more, you could wait for the price to come down to this level because it is actually also just above this support here. Because what we can see is that price action got supported here, supported here. And of course, this area, this lower level, this, in fact, I should change the colors. So let me actually make this line red. So you can see the red line is the lower support and the white line is the higher support. But we can see here that basically this gives us the idea that if price action probably comes down here again, we can actively buy here. Or if price action even enters this zone, this is going to be where we get a nice value for money in terms of our stock purchases. Now, of course, Microsoft could go on to put in new all time highs. But currently, you can see that there currently is some resistance. Now, I think when you actually look at the chart, and then, of course, you combine it with the valuations given here, it shows you exactly where your valuations are going to be. And if you think about it like this, if we actually saw that the value is even higher, and of course, let's say we did this a couple months ago, we would probably have waited for price action to get back to around this support before buying. And both of those buys actually did result in a really nice profit level. So this is a decent method if you ever want to value a stock using ChatGPT 4.0. And of course, quickly looking at trading view.